Charles Johnston. Did that give you? And then the specific questions are real helpful because I, I can talk lots of directions. And then, Creative systems theory offers the notion that while we tend to think of particularly our modern narrative uh, and the institutions and ways of thinking that go along with it as some ideal and endpoint that we only need to refine and polish, it proposes that, well, it really can't be an ideal and endpoint because it doesn't support and give us a basis for addressing the kind of challenges and questions that are confronting us in our time. But along that, that creative system theory predicts and articulates an important next chapter in how we think about narrative, and it calls it cultural mature narrative, just to have a term, to have a simple term. Essentially saying that there is a kind of growing up as a species that our times are asking of us. And that's a, a kind of story we're only beginning to learn how to tell, but in fact there have been threads, pieces of it in the best of thinking really over the last hundred years. Now a part of our task is to be more conscious of it and to, to act more from it. And the, and the concept of cultural maturity does, and it does three things basically. I mean it gives a new guiding story that we can use to replace things like the American dream and like the heroic and romantic image of the past. It also allows one to talk in very specific new capacities, leadership abilities we need in our personal lives and how we make choices on the planet that are really human capacities we've not had before. And lastly, it says there's some really some fundamentally new ways of thinking that the future needs to be about. We need to be able to think in much more dynamic, creative, systemic ways around complex issues than we have in times past. That's our emerging storytelling question. If you look at all those previous cultural stories, in some form or another, there was articulated in them a notion of absolute truth. There was a place you could go to to find final answers. The whole question of story has been one that's been very important to me and interesting to me through my whole life. In my, in my early 20s, I studied very closely with, uh, with Joseph Campbell, who was uh, you know, one of the last century's most sensitive articulators of myth and story. And creative systems theory is the body of work that I've developed over the course of my whole life and under, uh, underlies much of, much of my work. And it addresses uh, both why we are storytellers and also why we tell the very different kinds of stories we do at different times and places. So what is story in that? Well, story is a kind of shorthand that we use in different contexts to describe the, the underpinnings of what creates meaning in the context that we're in. So for example, if we're in a tribal culture, we're gonna tell animistic stories. We're gonna tell stories that are linked to our relationship in nature. And we'll very often tell stories that have to do with the beginnings of things, in that this is the beginnings of the human story. So creation stories are very important within almost any tribal culture. Uh, if we move into the state of the early civilizations, we get a different kind of story because now we're moving into a more polytheistic kind of reality and our stories in one way or another are talking about the magical ordering and relationships of things. So we might have a story like the Bhagavad Gita or the Iliad out of classical Greece. The next stage of story tells a very different kind of story yet and we move into a much more polar kind of story in which our stories are the equivalent of the of the middle ages in western culture in which our stories are now moral stories they really have to do with the relationship of good and evil and we might see that in the Arthurian legends, we would see it in the biblical tales on the, you know, it's told on the walls of a Gothic cathedral. 
with modern age and culture, we get a different kind of story yet, and it juxtaposes two different kinds of narratives. One is basically a heroic narrative, in which the, the task is to transcend and defeat those obstacles, or romantic, in which one finds the magical other in some kind of way. It's a more individual kind of narrative, so we could have a story of, uh, of Romeo and Juliet, or a more heroic side, uh, Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile or uh, landing a man on the moon. Those are our historic stories. And there I think we add a kind of transitional story along with a new and emergent kind of story in our time. The more transitional story is what we might call postmodern narrative. The postmodern story, in a sense, says, well, culture as parent that gives us our stories of truth. Um, we don't get that kind of truth anymore. So you're thrown into a reality in which the responsibility for the truth is very much more an individual responsibility. And so postmodern narratives tend to be multifaceted uh, narratives uh, drawn on multiple sources, and you will see themes of irony, contradiction in them. Now, the interesting thing, we can say, oh, well, that's a pretty major step beyond the previous stories, but I would also argue that it can't be the last word, because if you look at postmodern narrative, essentially by itself, it leaves one rudderless. It's part of what we're seeing in the postmodern transitional time, um, is story that becomes almost an absence of story. And in a sense, it screams that it is a story. It screams that it is meaningful. It is yelling as loud as it can, whether it's a heroic or a romantic story. And what it is is essentially just titillation. If I want to be provocative about it, there's studies in, in psychology in which to uh, connect a rat up to uh, a pedal that it can push on, will give it artificial stimulation to pleasure centers in its brain just by pushing on a, on a, on a pedal. And uh, what will happen in those, in those experiments is that the rat will figure out that they can get artificial stimulation by pushing the pedal, and the rat will just sit there and push the pedal until it starves to death. I, I look on an awful lot of contemporary media as little more than artificial stimulation sold in the name of meaning, which is great for selling products, but it doesn't involve any real engagement on the part of the person. I mean, to me, it's ultimately a statement about an absence of story and the critical importance of rethinking and finding story that can work on our time because our historical stories don't support us going forward. There's, there's a concept within creative systems theory that's called transitional absurdity. It's like we take an old story and push it beyond any reason that's at all helpful. You mentioned the Die Hard film and, and, and just sort of what popular media is doing right now. And we have this illusionary stuff that, that's that, that somehow that's sexy. Well, I'll be happy to respond to it. You have to realize I've written seven books in response to that question. <laughs> so one of the tricky pieces with culturally mature narrative when people first start engaging it is that because it doesn't include magic answers in the old sense, it can seem a lot less sexy. You know, how, you know, how do we accomplish the same thing that, ha that having a car blow up does, you know? And I would say much of our challenge is to be spending time with and attempting to articulate the new narrative sufficiently that it becomes what is sexy.